If you follow the news recently, you may have seen some articles regarding Apple and their new privacy regulations. You may hear it referred to as iOS 14, iOS updates, ATT, app tracking transparency. Any one of these terms is important to what we're talking about today. And essentially what it means is that Apple is changing the way they are allowing companies and apps to track data on their users, and they're giving users more control over how they share their data and who they give their data to. So if you are an iPhone user, this affects you. If you work in a media or advertising company, this affects you. If you work for a company that uses or collects data in any form, this affects you. There's so many people that this affects. Even if you're an Android user, it likely affects you because it may affect how companies are collecting your data and Google may follow suit soon as well. So let's break down what this new regulation actually means and how it works. Okay, the first thing to note is that the technical term for what we're talking about is app tracking transparency, also referred to as ATT, Apple's ATT. It is not AT&T, not the wireless provider. App tracking transparency is the technical term for what we're talking about. And essentially, this is Apple's new updates to privacy, user tracking, and giving iPhone users some more control over their data. So there are a couple of different ways that you can implement this. If you're an iPhone user, how does it actually work? Well, the first is that you can open up a new app and you get prompted with a message like this. It says, allow the app to track your activity across companies, apps, and website. You can say allow or ask app not to track. You may have seen this about a year, year and a half ago when you started to update to iOS 14, 14.5, I believe was the official version where every app had to start asking this question. So you had to go through every time you open up an app uh, after this iOS update, you had to answer this question. Now, if you download a new app, you have to answer this question. This gives you in the moment the ability to decide do you want to share data with this app or not? The other option is you can opt out at a device level and just say, I'm not going to let any apps collect my data. I don't care who it is. And you can do this by going into your privacy setting. There's some instructions here on how to do that. But these are the two ways to do it. You can either do it on an app by app basis or at a device level basis. The reality is the majority of people do it at an app by app basis. Some people will allow certain apps to track them and say no to other apps. But these are the two main ways. If you're an iPhone user, you have the ability to decide who can collect your data. So who does it affect? It affects everybody, it affects you, the user, but it really affects app collectors and data companies. So companies that rely on first party data, like Facebook, for example, can be really affected by this because now you have to decide if you're going to share your data with them. And Facebook is a huge company that relies heavily on their user data. So if a significant amount of users stop sharing their data with Facebook, Facebook will have less information on people and less information on how to target people. They can charge less for their ads. They won't be able to serve as many ads, reach as many people. So if you don't want somebody like Facebook collecting your information, you say, uh, ask app not to track, and that's going to significantly affect them. It also affects third-party data companies. And third-party data companies usually collect data from multiple sources. Unlike Facebook, they may be just beginning information from Facebook and Instagram, third-party companies can get data from lots of different apps and they compile that all together to create a data store or a large database of users based on all these different apps and all these different sources. So pre-ATT, a company collecting third-party data may be getting data from, let's say, four apps on a single device. And before you had to choose allow to track or not, the default was to allow these apps to collect your data. So these companies may be getting information from four different apps for every device. In a post-ATT world, some of those apps may go away in a situation where users app by app saying allow or not allow, 
that user may say no, don't allow it on some apps, but yes to others. So in this situation, these companies may be still getting a lot of data and the total number of apps that they're seeing hasn't dropped in significantly, but they're just getting less data from those users. So that's important to understand. What type of company are you dealing with and where are they getting their data? Is it from one single source or are they aggregating it from multiple sources? So who does this affect? It, other than those data companies, there are some specific things that you might not realize and, and what is uh, some effects you might not realize. And one example is app download campaigns. So example companies that run that would be Apps Fly or Java. So essentially the way an app download campaign works is that the user served an ad in an app. So you see an ad, says download this app. You click that ad. It takes you to the app store where you are prompted to download the app and then you download it and you open it. And now you see this image, ask app to track or not. So what happened before ATT was that as soon as you open that app, a signal is sent back to the campaign, to the advertiser saying that this app was downloaded and the user opened it. We can confirm now that that download took place, we can charge you for that download, dollar, two dollars, whatever the cost per download might be, whatever that metric might be. However, now you have two options. If the user selects allow, then great, that signal is sent back to the campaign confirming the app download has taken place. However, if they say ask app not to track, then no download confirmation is sent back. Even though that app did, that ad did drive a download, there's no confirmation that that download took place, which is obviously very significant. If you're paying on a cost per app download, all of a sudden, you know, half or more of your downloads might not be tracked anymore. So how do you deal with that situation? There are two main ways that companies will deal with something like that example of the app download tracking. And it is probabilistic versus deterministic reporting. And to explain that, deterministic is a one-to-one -one confirmation of result. So you, that would be only reporting on confirmed downloads. We determined with 100% app certainty that this app was downloaded as a result of your ad campaign. The other way is probabilistic, and that is essentially estimating the number of results based on known data, such as confirmed downloads, your opt-out rate, other user behavior. So that's saying we probably got a certain amount of the app downloads. Depending on the company you're working with, they may have both, one or the other, but it's worth having that conversation. How is the reporting determined? So an example of probabilistic reporting would be something like this. You confirmed 100 downloads took place because 100 people clicked allow tracking. Now you also know your opt-in rate is 50%. As the app developer, you will get this information. You will know how many people opt in to share data or don't. So you can determine your opt-in rate. So in this example, if your opt-in rate is 50%, then you can assume that only 50% of the downloads are being tracked. So in that situation, your probabilistic downloads is 200%. You confirmed 100 were downloaded, 50% of users opt in to share data. So you can assume that there were another 100 downloads that were driven from this ad campaign, but weren't measured because of people opting out and sharing their data. It's also important to note that Android data, which makes up about 50% of all mobile data, is still unaffected. So this app download issue only affects iPhone, iOS apps. It does not affect Android apps and Android data. As of January 2023, that is still unaffected. So what should you do? Depends who you are. If you're an advertiser, you can ask your advertising company where their data is coming from and how this has affected them. And it's important to, again, note that not all companies will have significant impact. Some use uh, iOS data more than others. Some can focus on Android. Some may be aggregating data like that third party example versus only getting it from a single source. So it's definitely worth asking, how are you affected by this and how might this affect my campaign? If you're a job seeker and you're curious about how this might affect a company that you're applying for, 
First, try to find out before applying if something like ATT will have an impact on the company. If so, they might have a blog post, they might put something on LinkedIn, or you can just do a little research and figure, you know, if this company relies heavily on iOS data, it's fair to assume that this has had some effect. And if that's the case, during an interview, ask them about it. How has has ATT affected them and how have they adjusted? And if you don't get a great answer, that might be a bit of a red flag that the company is struggling to figure out how to address it. Or you might get a really great answer of, oh, here's what we've done to address the issue, to mitigate it, focus on Android. It only makes up a small percent of our campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. There might be a lot of different uh, reasonable explanations, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to ask. And if anything, it makes it sound like you definitely know what you're talking about. You're aware of industry trends, and that will help you stand out in those interviews. So a lot here, this is really just a general overview of the ATT, the app tracking transparency, but it is a really uh, important thing to understand if you are in the advertising and media space.